Good morning student. Today I will teach you geography and I will start it from chapter 2. Population Dynamics. I have started it too because it is a theory chapter. So you please don't think that chapter 1 is out of syllabus. That's why I have mentioned here chapter 1 part of syllabus but it is practical based. That's why I want to start from 2 because it is theory based. Understood? Now for this subject you need one copy. I prefer small copy you know that one but it can be practical or ruled that is your choice. But one copy you will maintain for this subject. Classwork, homework, everything you will do in that copy. So now population dynamics. Population dynamics. What is the meaning of these two words? Population means you know inhabitants. Number of inhabitants in a particular area. And dynamic means here in this subject it means properties. Properties of population means everything. You can say human force, education system, population growth, population distribution, population density, everything. That means from this chapter we will learn about population dynamics means distribution, density, growth, composition, everything. Clear? So now I will start from distribution of population. What is the meaning of this word? Distribution of population a very simple thing. It is the it refers the way the people are spaced over this earth surface. In a very short way I have written. It is not the clear one. Very short one I have written. The distribution of population means it is a kind of way through which people are spaced on this earth surface. And I think all of you know the most populous country of the world. Yes, that is China. India takes second position. India holds second position. So that is the distribution of population. And density of population means what is the difference then in between two? Density means Total number, not total number, it refers the number of people living in one square kilometer area. So here we are indicating number of people but in one square kilometer area. That is the density and distribution means the way the people are spaced, total number of population. Total number of inhabitants in one area that indicates distribution. And number of people living in one square kilometer area that concept indicates density of population. Understood? Now this density of population can be divided into three different categories on the basis of number of persons I have mentioned. First one densely populated, second one moderately populated and third sparsely populated. Densely populated means when we can see number of persons are more than hundreds, are more than hundred per square kilometer. That area is called densely populated. When we can see number of person 50 to 100 per square kilometer, we say that area is moderately populated. And when we can see it is less than 50 persons per square kilometer area, we say sparsely populated area. So which one basically densely populated area? All of you know the area which has good fertile soil, many industries, those areas are coming under this category. And moderately means this area has the facility of irrigation, has the mining facility. There we can see this number of persons per square kilometer area and sparsely means all of you know student it is desert. It can be hot desert, it can be cold desert, whatever where less number of population that is less than 50 percent, less than 50 percent per square kilometer area is found that is sparsely populated area. Cleared? 
Now the third part. Factors affecting the distribution of population. Distribution of population throughout the world, even if you take our country, not same. Somewhere it is very high, somewhere it is moderate, somewhere it is low. Why? Because it depends on some factors. That factors can be two types. One, I didn't mention that one. I am going to write. One is called these five factors together called natural factors understood this one is called natural factors under the natural factors we are getting this five subdivision and another one is called this five this not five yes six are there it is called economic or cultural factors. So, factors which affect the distribution of population can be two types. One is physical or natural. It has one more term, physical. And another is economical or cultural. Under physical factors, we are getting relief climate, natural vegetation, soil and availability of water and under economic or cultural factors we are getting mineral resources, industries, transport, urbanization, migration and government policies. On the basis of all these factors this distribution of population varies. Somewhere it is high, moderate or low. One one example I am giving you Really features, all of you can see, all of you know about it, that plain area means highly populated or where population is very high. But mountainous or hilly area, low. Desert area, very low. Natural vegetation like forest area, Amazon forest, equatorial forest, population is low. So these are the factors, like that way. Soil also, good fertile soil means alluvial soil. That area has huge number of population, but sandy soil, desert, less population. So these are few factors which refer, which responsible to change the distribution of population. Same way we are getting cultural, like mineral resources, yes, good source of minerals means that area is highly populated, less source, less number of population because you know mineral uh, resources actually give us opportunity, job opportunity. That's why population distribution varies. Industry, same thing. Transport, urbanization, migration and government policy. All these four, they are interrelated. Good transport system means the urbanization developed. Urbanization developed when migration takes place. Migration takes place when government policies are very good. So these four are interrelated but all are part of cultural factor. On the basis of this, all factors, distribution of population varies. Done. Okay. We have learned the factors which affect the distribution of population. So suppose it is one area. Here we can see 100 percent people are living 100 percent total number of population 100 because of some those because of those factors now this number can change sometime it increase sometime it decreases why because of some another factors this kind of changes actually called population growth or change so, this growth or change can be two types, positive or negative. When we can see the number has increased, we say positive change. When we can see number has decreased, it is called negative change. These changes mainly depend on these three factors. That is called components of population change. And the factors are birth rate, death rate and migration. Very simple, if birth rate increases, means 
we will get positive change. Death rate increases means we will get negative change. And migration, it leads both the changes. So, migration, what is migration which is a completely new term for us? I am going to discuss that one. So, migration is responsible for positive change, even negative change also. So, what is migration? But before knowing that, birth rate and death rate, these two meanings are very important. Birth rate means the number of live births per 1000 people in year. And the death rate, it refers the number of deaths per 1000 people in a year. And now, migration, which is the important Migration means the movement of people from one place to another is called migration. I repeat, the movement of people from one place to another is called migration. So, suppose it is place A and it is place B. So, the movement of people, suppose People are moving from A to B. So, this is called migration. Clear? So, migration means the movement of people from one place to another. That is migration. But it can be two types. In migration and out migration. Means, see this one. From here, from A to B, people are moving. So, what happened? Here, number is increasing. So, it is called in migration. And here number of population decreasing, it is called out migration. Understood? So migration mainly two types, in migration and out migration. In migration refers increasing number of population and out migration refers decreasing number of population. It leads mainly overpopulation and this one leads underpopulation and these two categories these two characteristics not good for any place overpopulation you know what are the effects of the overpopulation depletion of natural resources unemployment crime environmental degradation and here population is too low to utilize the resources properly of this place. So, both are not good for any place. But this migration is responsible for overpopulation and underpopulation. But yes, it's true, not only migration, overpopulation and underpopulation also depends on birth rate and death. But here I am discussing migration. That's why I am telling migration is also responsible for overpopulation and underpopulation. And these two are found when in migration takes place and out migration takes place. Understood? So these are the two types of migration. Whatever the type, it can be taken in four different areas. I have written migration can take Rural area to rural. R and U I have written. R means rural. U means urban. Rural area to rural area. Urban to urban it may happen. Rural to urban it may happen. Or urban to rural area it may happen. So in these four different areas migration can take place. What type of migration? Either in migration or out migration. Now this is our fifth topic. Composition of population. Before starting this, I want to say something. Topic 1, 2, 3 and 4 like distribution of population, density of population, factors affecting the density, even population growth. These four topics were related to quantity of population. And this topic is related to quality of population. Now we can say that somewhere distribution of population more, high, moderate, whatever. But this number of population has some qualities that is called composition of population. So one area, the number of population of that area has some quality or characteristics. 
those characteristics are which one I am going to say now age composition, sex ratio, literacy rate and age and sex pyramid. These four are the characteristics of population which we say composition of population. It tells us about the quality of population. So first age composition. Age composition means age structure. In one area we are getting different people of different ages. And on the basis of that concept, we are getting three categories. Children, age category limit 0 to 15. Adult, age limit 15 to 60. And the old age, age limit 60 and more than that. And on the basis of this age category, we are getting these three terms. 0 to 15, which one is called children group. Coming dependent age population. This group called adult 15 to 16. They are called working population age. And the last old age 60 and more than that. They are also coming in the same category like children dependent one. So very simple example. You take any one place where we can see working population is more. So this age group is more than this two group means that place has enough human force. Enough human force means more development. But do you think just opposite one where this working age group is, is less and these dependent groups are higher than that. So what is the problem? They will create burden on this working age and we cannot see any development of that place. So on the basis of these categories of population based on age group, we can say the age composition of any place. And the better composition situation is which one? When we see adult group is more than the children or old age group. Done? Our next one is sex ratio. Sex ratio means it tells us about number of males and females of a particular area. And generally we express it like number of females. We described it number of females per thousand male. And all of you know in our country this ratio is not good. In our country females number less than the male. Literacy. You know about this characteristics. Literacy means it tells us about education. Number of educated people of any place. That one we can express with this term literacy. And the age and sex pyramid, very interesting and very clear diagram, this last one. Age and sex pyramid actually with the help of it's a diagram. Here I tried to explain, I tried to draw that one, I am going to explain. But this age and sex pyramid actually tell us about our first age composition and the second sex ratio of any place together with the help of diagrams. Suppose first diagram you see the lower portion shows the percentage of male and female. I can divide this diagram like this way. Your left portion male, right portion female. Same thing. And your left side this line shows age group. That group I have mentioned here. You think about that. Now you are getting one structure, one diagram. And what we can see from this di diagram? The lower part is greater than middle part. Means lower means which group? This group. So here dependent population is more than the working population. Male or female whatever. And just now I said if dependent one is more than the working one. It creates burden over the working population and development of that place is less. And you just see then this diagram here lower portion and upper portion means children and old age. This side age group I said these two are less but middle one is greater. Middle one means adult one. Adult one means working population. Here what we can see? The middle one means work, working population is more than the dependent one. 
means here human force is more human force is more means more development so with the help of this diagram this diagram actually called pyramid because it gives us pyramid like structure so with the help of this diagram very nicely we can represent we can explain the age and sex category of any place means age composition and sex ratio of any place and from these diagrams we are getting the idea about the quality of population particular on that area so this is the topic composition of population cleared now the last part of our today's topic that is homework home assignment because i said about the population dynamic the quality and quantity of a population of our population now the homework discuss the following these boxes given in our book i have mentioned the page number 33 and 35 two boxes given you have to fill up these two boxes in the book with the help of pencil not in the copy what i said in the book you have to fill up these two boxes with the help of pencil you try to find out the answers of those boxes now from exercise yes this part you have to do in your copy i mentioned what type of copy question number 1 very short type answers there from a to f means all questions and their answer you have to write in your copy so this one in your book this one you have to do in your copy done and the last part here you will just prepare the meaning of all terms page number i i have given 37 one link box given and there are many new terms have mentioned with their meaning you have to prepare all the meanings i will ask that one so writing part means only first one and second one this one in the book this one in the copy and this one you just prepare thank you